What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So today we're talking sports photos and I'm going to try to create the definitive guide to what I think makes good sports photos. As you can tell by the title, I'm going to try and do this quick, okay? I get a huge amount of contact from people asking me what I think of their photos. They'd like me to look at their photos on Instagram, maybe message me some photos, email, whatever it might be. And and I find myself so, so often giving the same probably three or four tips. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. So, so often it's the same three, four tips that I keep on sharing again and again and again. And whilst that might feel tedious for people, and maybe in some cases I think the response uh, is almost viewed to be a bit too simple for people and they, they feel like perhaps I should have some kind of magical formula, but actually it's the simple things that count. So what I thought I would do today is reiterate some of those points create a small mini guide that you guys can refer back to whenever you want to make sure you save this video down somewhere and if ever you're not sure about your photos you can watch this video back and compare the points with your photos and see where you stand before we get into this do me a favor hit that like button make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you can come back and view this video anytime you want and of course all my future videos What's up guys, forgive me, I am briefly interrupting this video just to let you know that we've got a special promotion right now over on my website on my Lightroom presets. You can get my general Lightroom presets pack which includes things like early morning blues, fiery landscape, faded film. You can get my sports pack which includes things like my sports starter preset, my cold as ice, my dramatic black and white, all the reds and of course you can get my free starter sports preset. Also, if you head over there to the website, in the checkout, you can use the code YTube10 and that's going to get you 10% off any of those preset packs that you would like. With one simple click in Lightroom, you can turn your image from something regular into a cool edited photo. Go check them out. Link is in the description. Right, back to Rob for the video. Right, let's get into this. Number one point, the biggest thing that I always find myself saying to people, and that is get the ball in the shot okay this is such a key one and yet such a simple one as well sometimes people feel the urge to share photos because it's a nice photo it might be sharp in focus the colors are nice the exposure's right but the ball isn't in the shot and for me that means you've got to get rid of that photo forget about it because if the ball's not in it or it might be a ball a shuttlecock whatever the key part of that game is you need it in the shot for me for it to be a decent photo photo. Of course, sometimes you get away from the action photos that don't have the ball in the shot, but if it is an action on the pitch, on the court photo, get the ball in the shot. Okay, point number two is make sure you can see people's faces. So often people have, again, what they feel is a great action shot and they want to share it because it's nice and the colours are there and everything else works, but you can't see the player's face. So for example, some shots I took at the game just the other day, this shot right here, nice looking action shot, but you can't see the player's face. So for me, that frame got binned. If you look at the next frame, the player's moved a bit, still can't see his face, so the frame got binned. If you look at the third one, now I can see his face, but the trouble is the ball has gone out the top of the frame, and so now it's no good because the ball's not in the frame. All three of those images got binned. I didn't have anything from that little piece of action because I had to be ruthless and had to make sure I picked the photos that worked. None of those three did. So tip number two, get the faces in the photo. Okay, so tip number three, and this is kind of two in one because this is going to be number one make sure your photos are straight it is the easiest piece of editing to do to grab the corner of your photo in Lightroom or whatever other editing program you use and rotate it slightly so that you get it straight get your images straight the second part of this is don't be afraid to crop your photos yes in an ideal world you get it all right in the camera but so often in sports you won't so there is absolutely nothing wrong with taking a photo like this that looks pretty decent straightening it ever so slightly crop it in ever so slightly and suddenly you've got a much better image the first one wasn't horrendous but the straightened and cropped one looks better and so try to always straighten and crop your images to improve how they look sometimes you get a nice clean image that looks good but it doesn't look as good as it could you get a nice looking image you straighten it ever so slightly you crop it in and again you've got a nicer image than the original one that you had and all 
all you've done is straightened it a bit, cropped it a bit, and it's a better photo. Sometimes cropping a lot can drastically improve a photo. You might have a really crowded frame that doesn't really work, but actually by cropping right in, you've got a totally different composed photo that works. You've got the ball in it, the faces are in it, everything's how we want it to be. Don't be afraid to crop. And the last and fourth point that I'm going to share is again to do with being ruthless, right? You have to pick of your photos what I always call the peak action photo. So you might take a burst of images, a sequence of images, and you might look at them and think, you know what, five or six of these are good images. And sometimes they will be. But as part of your being ruthless and making sure you stick to all those rules of the faces, the balls, everything else, you've got to be ruthless and pick the image that works even if that means from a whole sequence a whole burst of images you've only got one frame you have to be ruthless do that and cut out the ones that don't work if we look at these photos right here for example this is a burst of action a real big moment in the game that i shot this past weekend lacey james went up for a big dunk it was a big moment it was used on highlight reels and stuff like that and i captured a burst of that sequence however because of the angle that it happened at and where i was sat I didn't necessarily have the best look at it. You can see here from the first image, I was at an angle where unfortunately uh, the guy's toes are slightly cut off, the defenders look a bit awkward and I can't see the guy's face. If I look at the next frame and the next frame, similar kind of story. So whilst those were cool, good action shots of someone going towards the basket, I decided they weren't good enough because I couldn't see the player's face. So all of those got binned off. As we get a bit closer, I still couldn't see his face, but then as the ball goes through the hoop, I then could see his face. So I had that one second where actually, with a bit of straightening and cropping, I could see the player's face, I could see the ball in the shot, and I felt like it worked. The frame after that was a little bit too late in the action for me. It felt like I'd missed the peak of the action. It was kind of like an afterthought image, so I felt that that one wasn't good enough either. So of that sequence, of that burst, I had seven decent frames but when I decided to stick to the rules of seeing the face seeing the ball in the shot the basket and everything else of all those photos I only had one frame that worked and that's because I was ruthless and I only picked the best one so that's my tip number four be ruthless with your photos you have to be your hardest critique even if that means taking a set of a hundred photos that you've taken and deciding that you've only got 10 good ones because what would you rather see people see a hundred okay images or people see 10 great images you want them to see the great images right that's why we have to be ruthless so there we go the definitive guide to what i think makes a better sports photo follow those rules and you won't go far wrong it sounds fairly simple but so often i'm seeing photos from people that don't stick to those rules and then maybe they almost feel a bit disappointed when i say yeah they could have been better I hope that helps you guys. If it does, do me a favor, hit the like button on the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video.